okay guys so welcome to another video welcome to this video all right so today i'm going to discuss nfts okay so here's my essential guide short and sweet a guide on how and what nfts are and hopefully by the end of this video you should understand very clearly in a nice clean and concise way about what nfts are so let's crack on so what are NFTs? Now, without having to go into too much detail, I saw a very great article which I wanted to bring up to you guys. All right. So click on it here. Now, what are NFTs? Now, a man called Oli from Coindesk gave us a very, very good outline of what they are. All right. So let's have a look at this. All right. So the best definition I've seen so far for NFTs is... Non-fungible tokens are digital assets, okay, that represent a wide range of unique tangible and intangible items. For collectible sports cards or from collectible sports cards to virtual real estate and even digital sneakers, guys. So NFTs, now the concept of NFTs has been around since time has begun or since time began. Now, uh, when it comes to NFTs, you know, from the medieval times renaissance times till now there's always been things that have value that can't be exchanged for another so the idea of non-fungibility as a concept is you have an item that has a particular value which cannot be exchanged for like for like with something else because it has something unique about this no unique about it so if you want to get a keyword from this right now uniqueness so nfts have a lot to do with unique value or unique intrinsic value okay so, for example, you know, there may be a million cups that have been made by a teacup company, but then speaking from the UK, let's think about Queen Elizabeth II. If she was to drink from one of those cups, immediately that cup will have a much higher value because her DNA has been switched in with that cup. And so if that cup was to be sold, especially if after a long time and, you know, after she passes, and it's been there for a while, it will have increasing, increasingly more value intrinsically because of who used that cup. Now, all of those other cups can't be interchanged with each other because Queen Elizabeth didn't drink from all of those cups, if you get the picture. Okay, so Oli Leach gave a really good example. Now, shout out to Coindesk, okay? Another good place is Cointelegraph. If you want some legitimate news, now I know in the crypto space right now, things are really taking off and a lot of people are involved in increasingly a lot of more people are becoming involved in this space but one thing i want to give you some clarity on is that not everybody says the truth and not everybody knows what they're saying but i can definitely say coindesk and coin telegraph if you want legitimate quality news it's a good place to stop by so definitely give them a stop by when you're doing your crypto research all right so one of the main benefits okay of owning digital collectibles versus physical collectibles like a Pokemon card or rare minted coin is that each NFT has a di contains distinguishing information that makes it both distinct from any other NFT and easily verifiable. Now, one of the biggest issues we've had in the past when it comes to NFTs, okay, so for example, the Mona Lisa, or let's then talk about artwork in general. Now, you may not know the stories, you may do, you know, but there have been many stories, even up to recent, where many famous paintings or artwork which are classified as nfts because there's only one of them or maybe only two in the world that exist okay have been copied multiple times by different people and to a very high degree and because there isn't any infrastructure to know that or there isn't that much of there is infrastructure but not as you know defined or as strong to be able to say this is a fake or this is not a fake okay at times you know many people who are fraudsters have got away with a lot of money you know selling fake you know, um, items of value, okay? If you want to think of NFTs in a way, NFTs in the crypto sense or in the, using blockchain technology is like digital antiques, okay? The only thing is that they're quite new, so they're not antique just yet, but they're, in a sense, they have the same value as you would look at an antique or antique. So looking at this, one of the greatest things you can see from, you know, NFTs right now when it comes to the crypto space is that blockchain technology allows for such clarity 
as to what is real and what is fake, what is what is true data and what is fake data because of the nature of how the infrastructure of blockchain is. Now, regular cryptocurrencies, okay, they're cryptocurrencies or they're tokens which represent a part of that network or of that technology of that blockchain. So Ethereum coins are for the Ethereum blockchain. You have Bitcoin, which is for the Bitcoin blockchain and etc. Okay. Now NFTs cannot be directly exchanged with one another. And this is because no two NFT NFTs are identical. Now, without going into too much deep detail, one of the most important things to understand is that with NFTs, the concept for them to be have to have value, there needs to be a limited supply. If there isn't a limited supply, okay, then it doesn't have rarity, which is the key for what you need in something to be an antique or to be an NFT, digitally speaking. Okay. Now, because blockchain number one is immutable, okay, is public also. And some of the other attributes that it has, it allows for NFTs to be able to be very easily identified whether there's, or it's very easy for the public to identify if somebody's trying to do fraud or if something's real the true ownership, who owns it, who was created by, and etc. All of those things are on the blockchain. Because it's immutable, it cannot be removed. So in theory, when it comes to NFT, NFT, excuse me, digitally, I would say NFTs digitally, to me, my personal opinion, are even more powerful than physical ones. Now, there's been a whole lot of situations taking place with, uh, in this phase of NFTs that we are in right now. It's a very new industry in terms of you know the real exposure or growth okay it's been around for quite a while and the concept of nfts has been discussed for many many years but when it really kicked off i would say is with ethereum okay so when ethereum came out you know when we could actually have programmable money as it's called then we had token standards so erc20 and then we had some newer erc standards put out by ethereum so that this concept of NFTs can come alive, it really became a game changer. So moving forward, okay, one of the great examples of when we talk about ERC token standards, and I will do a video on those for sure in deep detail. Now, the ones written here, we have ERC721. Okay, now ERC721 is the token standard responsible for NFTs or is that it is, allows for NFTs to exist on blockchain, okay? And then we have ERC-115, okay, which is similar, but what it is is that we have the ERC-20 token, which is the normal cryptocurrencies that most of us would know, okay, so different um, blockchain or different blockchain companies who, or companies who work on the blockchain for, with it, or work with Ethereum, you know, have tokens, which we would call ERC-20, so ERC-115 is ERC-20 plus ERC721. And then there isn't one here which is very important as well, which is ERC998. Okay, and that token standard I'll be talking about in more detail. I think it's fantastic. Okay. It's a token standard where you can have a group or you can start to group these ERC721 tokens into different groups, which is fantastic for many different things like collectibles, to collectible cars, digital cars, and etc. Okay. So NFTs for me, are a very powerful industry, a very game-changing industry for, for the first time, is not just about being able to tell whether an item is real or fake in terms of a digital NFT, okay, but it also allows for entire industries who have been put down or have been taken advantage of because of the centralized system we have to actually have the opportunity to take full advantage of their own gifts and skills. So. Cryptocurrency as a tech, cryptocurrency and cryptographic technology, blockchain technology, distributed ledger technology, you know, in the, in the cryptographic way is really a game changer. Okay. Now for me, speaking for me, I'm a musician. One of the most powerful things about NFTs is with NFTs, there's different companies like one I can think of Audius, which are allowing for digital artists and or artists who make digital work in terms of like, for example, music. Okay, to be able to have the chance to earn royalties in the right way. Okay, now, currently in a centralized system, we have many intermediaries. Okay, there's many different levels between you producing 
music for it to go in out to the public and then the money coming back to you okay now what we have in this scenario with audius for example is that they've created a way where digital artists who you know artists who make music digitally can actually be able to receive as i said their their royalties correctly and a whole load of other great stuff okay you have what we call secondary buying where let's say if the music was sold on instead of the third parties taking all the money from transactions and commissions the artist gets to have their percentage and put a say onto what they get and just a whole load of amazing things okay but i don't want to run ahead of myself because i'm getting excited now four things to remember okay i couldn't have said it better myself four things to keep in mind when it comes to the key characteristics of nfts apart from what i've said is they're non-interoperable now this is important okay so they're not in other words the same thing as non-fungible the same kind of concept you can't exchange one for another now in this example a crypto punk which is a type of um nft okay it's a digital animation and we'll be doing a lot more videos for you to see where they are cannot be exchanged with a crypto kitty now if you look at the thumbnail of this video you'll see a nice cute little kitten or not little big in the thumbnail but you get the picture so crypto kitties are one of the first nfts if not i believe is the first nft to actually exist on ethereum okay and crypto punks somewhere nearby okay so you can't actually you can't actually change one F nft into another okay and this is very powerful number two they're indivisible so NFTs cannot be divided into smaller denominations like Bitcoin, Satoshi. So this is where, if you're wondering what's the difference between you know cryptocurrency as you know the tokens and an NFT token, this is it. Okay, they're not divisible because it's a whole item. You can actually have an, a whole item now. I would say this: there is some development by a few companies to actually change this indivisible feature and make it divisible in some sec in some sectors or in some aspects. Let me give you an example. So let's say for example virtual real estate now there's some great companies who are working on things like that especially when it comes to gaming and vr for example decentraland manor that's the ticker for it um and companies like that the sandbox another great one which have really seen some you know amazing gains over this last i would say three week period massive increase because of this concept of virtual real estate now let's say um, the virtual real estate cost uh, $500,000, okay? Now, you may not have the money to have to be able to pay for one entire land, but let's say you wanted to have a part in that investment for the future because NFTs, the aim is for them to appreciate over value. Because of this limited supply, you know, in theory, the price of, or the cost of the NFT over time should increase, okay? And the value should increase over time. So it's the same kind of concept when we talk about, for example, virtual land. So with virtual land, you don't have 500,000, but let's say you have 50,000. So you can have a 10% share in that NFT. And as the price appreciates and there's secondary selling and then percentages are made. Now, secondary selling, just to put it out there, if you sell, if you create an NFT and you sell it as a creator, every time it's resold, you also get a 10% cut or 20% cut, depending on what's calculated for you was um, worked out every time that painting or piece of art or piece of music is resold which is so powerful okay this is actually absolutely game changing so this is one of the things where divisibility is important within the nft space and it will, can open up more doors to allow for even more growth okay i'm telling you right now guys the crypto industry is is not just another fad or another excitement from a couple of nerds this is actually an, a new addition to human life as as we know it okay the last revolution we had was the dot-com boom which was when internet came out and as you can see some of us who are younger have grown up always knowing the internet some of you you know as they say generation z have completely grown up with the internet some of us the internet didn't exist and then it came around i'm kind of in the middle i would say I was, I think I was born during the internet time when there was internet, but that technology has revolutionized everything we do, how we pay for things, what we, you know, how we go to get food or just everything we do in life, how we, you know, run businesses. Okay. In the last, and this is a key here, in this last boom or 
the internet boom, which was called a bubble by some or to, by most until things change and the, the industry had time to mature, which is what I believe cryptos and NFTs need with just the time to mature. You know, before when people used, you know, had companies, many big businesses who had just stores were put out of business by e-commerce. So from the internet, we had e-commerce. Okay. So now people could have digital stores, which the concept was kind of out of this world. How can you have a store that doesn't have a physical building? Okay. And this is the same with, thing with crypto. There's many concepts in crypto right now, which are maturing, I, I would say, at a steady pace. And when they come around, a lot of the concepts of how is that even possible will become a reality that everybody's kind of like, oh, yeah, that's how we do it. Don't you know about Amazon? Don't you know about eBay? And etc. So please, guys, don't ignore crypto. Now, I am a currencies trader, a forex trader. But even for that, I'm very heavily involved in crypto. Okay, trading crypto, holding crypto. At the end of the day, guys, we're right now we're in a golden period where we have the chance to be able to make absolutely amazing gains and also to get our foot into the door before the windows close. Because there will come a time when as soon as the, you know, as is said wisely, when nobody's looking for an asset, that's the time to buy it. And when everybody's looking for that asset, okay, it's time to sell it. Okay. And I think this was said by uh, Warren Buffett. Okay. This is where we are right now when it comes to nfts and this whole space DeFi technology and etc now number three indestructible because nf all nft data and i mean all is stored on the blockchain via smart contracts now smart contracts okay i think one of the most confusing terms that many people have asked me is that why is it called a smart contract now it's not actually a contract it's actually an executable file okay lines of code which automatically execute on the blockchain which cannot be modified okay by outside influence and therefore the tokens or the how the price how price works how the nft works how the system works is run by code so as we as computer scientists will say code is law okay so when code becomes law you know the need for trust okay on either side of the party doesn't actually have to be there i mean the worst thing that can happen is a smart contract have maybe some poorly written code but if the code is really good and it's very solid and it's been checked over and everything like that and there are companies that do code checks on smart contracts and things like that then you don't have to you don't have to trust the person you're doing a transaction with now for example we know that with bitcoin or if you didn't know with bitcoin it was designed for peer-to-peer -peer transactions where you didn't need a middleman an intermediary to get in the way of your payment you could send money from where you are to let's say somebody all the way, if they have internet connection, they have a phone all the way in the furthest part of the world and they'll receive that money as that money in their account with no blockage, no, no, um, you know, fees or anything like that, which is powerful. Okay. Now this peer to peer system in order for it to work, you know, both sides need to fulfill their, their agreement. However, as human nature is not everybody is what we say a good actor. Some people are bad actors, but if there's code in place that's autonomous that can't be edited and is set in place with laws and rules to regulate a system no matter what happens on either end if one person doesn't fulfill their need in order for the smart contract to fulfill both sides of the needs both people need to do the requirements if one person doesn't do it and the other does the other person is safe because you know the action won't trigger so in other words if you're a coder this will be if statements if x and y happens do this else do something else okay this is code in terminology so it's the same kind of thing so being indestructible another powerful thing here is that because the tokens are also immutable it means for example gamers now one big area of nfts right now and you should be looking into is nfts to do with gaming okay now nfts in games are things like you know if you're thinking about i don't know world of warcraft like magical swords or a special type of helmet that you know only one exists now in the before nfts was a thing or digital nfts was a thing you know all of these games that people play and they buy all of these items if you're a call of duty fan and you have all of these different now imagine if you're a call of duty fan for example and you you have different camels that you have on your guns or you have certain um clothing and armor that you wear that you you know earn through maybe opening boxes or something like that now imagine not just being able to purchase that 
and have it in game, but it doesn't belong to you because right now it doesn't belong to you, it belongs to whoever's written the or made the newest Call of Duty. So the Call of Duty label, maybe Activision or whichever, whoever's turn it is to create Call of Duty right now. Imagine having those same items as NFTs, but now when you buy them, you actually own them. They're actually something as an asset to you that exists on the blockchain that belongs to you. Whether the game exists or it doesn't exist, it belongs to you. Powerful, right? Absolute game changer. So these con this, this kind of contrast, for example, here in this example, this contrast with buying things like music from iTunes stores where the user doesn't actually own the music they're buying. They just purchase their license to listen to them. Okay, this is amazing. Okay, game changing. Number four is verifiable. Another huge benefit. And when I say huge, I mean huge. Okay, another benefit of storing historical ownership data on the blockchain is that items such as digital artwork can be traced back to the original owner or to the original creator as well. And this is important too because, you know, a lot of time, some of the work that have gone in history have no name, there's no signature. Now, some people see it as an artistic, um, kind of thing abstract kind of thing not to put any name on there but to be fair and you know sometimes very good historians have to decode the style of you know the colors used the the pat you know all of those different minute things to kind of have an idea of possibly who it is but with blockchain technology if you've made it we'll know that's how how beautiful is that okay and this creator can also make sure that he gets what's right near you because sometimes especially in the past, if someone was jealous or a king wanted that piece of um, art and wanted to own it, he could just kill off the person who made it and it becomes his and he put his signature and then job done. Doesn't work now with NFTs. And if you kill the person off, it still belongs to that person and you have no means to get access to it unless you have access to their wallet and their seed words, which I don't know about that. So it's so funny. I promise you guys that it's going to be People are going to be having crazy ways to hide their seed words and things like that. Now, talking about NFTs, whenever there's a, a new token created in anything, so in the stock market, with you know, there's the trading of shares, okay, which are from stocks. Now, same thing with NFTs. Now that there's a market for NFTs, okay, now there are NFTs. There is a market for it or marketplace for you to be able to buy them. So let's have a look at marketplaces. Now, one I want to talk about. There are many. But there's just one or two I want to talk about today. First one I talk, want to talk about is Rarible. So I'm going to switch over. I have it loaded here already for you guys. All right. So I'm going to pull up Rarible here. And I, pull up the, I pulled up the FAQ. All right. I'll let this one load up for you guys. And I'll also load this up for you too. All right, so let's load that up. Now, Rarible, okay, is right now is making complete waves across the cryptocurrency universe. And the reason being is that there's been, of course, there's been such a massive increase in, if you haven't seen already, or for those of you in the crypto space, you know, there's been a massive, you know, awareness of this thing called NFTs. Now, when, as this is loading, I think it's important to understand, you know, where Rarible sits at the moment. So is Rarible is a digital exchange. Now let's see, here's the FAQ as well. I have it loaded up here. So it, Rarible is a marketplace or a place for you to be able to digitally buy and sell NFTs. Okay, if you're a, if a digital artist and you want to share your art, you can actually do so. You have the ability and opportunity to be able to sell your art in a marketplace in a safe environment. Now, Wearable was very powerful for many, many reasons, okay? And I want to talk just for about two or three minutes as to why I think it's such an amazing place and it's something that you should be looking out for, okay? Now, Wearable's taken a long time to load up, but it should load up any moment. Here we go. So, Wearable, on the front end, when you open up this, this place and, and we're looking at Wearable, so we have a whole load of different things here. We have, you know, art and the artists, we have top sellers of art, okay, as this is loading up, okay. Now, my signal's quite low, but we'll get this to load up again. But this is what the front end looks like, okay. A whole load of different pieces of art going forward and you can scroll down 
and have a look. There's collections you can explore. Okay, and as this loads up, okay, shows you all of the different pieces of art that are going along. Okay, so here you go. So here are some pieces of digital art. Okay, and, and this website, is, is, to me, is a lot like eBay in the sense that you can either sell art at a specific price or you can put up an auction. And, you know, artists go up in here and share their art, look for sellers, um, and well, buyers look for sellers and sellers look for buyers on this place. And it's a really fantastic place that you can start to look at NFTs and see what's going on. Even if you're not buying or selling and you just want to look, I'd highly recommend look in here all right so rareable why is it so powerful now for those of you who are more crypto savvy one of the things that rareable is trying to achieve and it's the first of its kind is that rareable is trying to be a DAO or a decentralized autonomous organization now for those of you who are not too sure about what that is and are crypto fans that would you know, or you want to become a crypto fan and understand what that is now a DAO or a decentralized autonomous organization is where, same thing as I said before, code is law. And in other words, you have an organization which is run for the community by the community where the decisions made within that community is not by a centralized organization, but rather by a group vote. Okay. And in order for that to happen in the crypto space, you need what we call a governance token or you need some sort of governance. Okay, so Rarible actually has his own cryptocurrency token, which is called Rari or Rari. Okay, and the ticker for that is R A R I. Okay, so the Rari token, in, this, in essence, how it works in simple terms, the more coins you have, the more percentage of right you have to make votes about what goes on and being in, in, you know, in essence, of how the company moves forward to be able to provide more services. Okay, if you don't like things, which is fantastic, instead of possibly, you know, being having having a lawsuit drilled up on you by a centralized organization, okay, instead of that, you can actually be able to freely share how you think, vote on certain options on removing things, adding things, and etc., which is powerful. Okay, this has never been done before. And for the first time in history, the people have a say as to what goes on. Now, as they're moving towards being you know, a decentralized autonomous organization. I believe right now they're on their way there, okay, but they're still kind of non-custodial. But I think now that they've got the token, I believe that they're moving forward into a DAO because you can actually connect your wallet here and start to transact, okay? You don't need any KYC. Now, for those of you who are not too sure, now with centralized organizations or currently what we have as the norm for now is if you want to get access to any platform, it requires you to give your information or KYC. Okay, which is to know your customer. Now, for me, coming a background working in a in a bank for four years, four and a half years, building society, we did a lot of KYCs for people who want to just register an account. Okay, now cryptocurrency and the whole idea of cryptocurrency allows you to have that privacy. Now, how it's portrayed at the moment for many, you know, sitting on the fence. And if you are, I would really challenge you to have a look at this is that you know cryptocurrency is kind of like a rebellion from the man or rebellion from doing things the normal way but in fact it actually provides you privacy you know because in even though we had the internet arising and we had the issue you know we had issues with them one of the greatest issues with you know the internet is that everybody had access to your information and your information or your data became a marketplace by itself it was kind of became like an nft if you want to call it that there was a data, there is still the data marketplace. So all the cold calls that you receive, all the crazy emails you receive from places you've never put your email in, it all comes from the fact that your data, you have, when you join certain institutions, you know, because we all just click, I accept terms and conditions, we actually don't read it. And I think it's made that way so that you just accept it because sometimes they're like 14, 15 pages long and you just want to download the game and play or something. You haven't got time to read 15 pages. You just want to get going. Okay, but within those terms and conditions, there's a lot of clauses where your information can be sold or given to what they call a third party to be used for marketing. So all of the cold calls you get from strange places of the world or from your hometown or homeland, this is right. Now, with removing that factor and cryptocurrency allows you to have the opportunity to be able to just participate with your wallet, with your money, 
in a market where you're anonymous or you're only known by your depending on your wallet address okay and you can transact with people in a fair market where code is law each party has to fulfill their side in order for them to receive the benefits of the market okay and is autonomous which means that there's no outside force trying to put their hands in their meddle with anything which is absolutely powerful so if you see something when a website where it says connect your wallet this means you know you're going to only interact with the interface using your wallet and your account to do business you don't have to put any of your name you don't have to give your name your email your phone number which is absolutely powerful now some people see that as oh wouldn't it be fraudulent yes there are always going to be bad actors you can't get away from human nature there are going to be people that do bad things however okay it really opens the door for us to be able to have control over what we we what we we give out okay for too long centralized institutions have had a monopoly over the people because there's a small group of people who have access to all of the largest and most important industries or every industry to be honest and they take advantage of the everyday man okay so this is what i'm talking about right now and uh, so moving forward the rari token let's have a look here so i'm going to close up rari for now all right let's have a look at the governance token pull this up here so what is rari so rari is a native governance token of the nft marketplace rarible designed to reward active platform users with a voice on the platform's future okay so you can see right here how is design already is fantastic because you have the more active you are on this on the platform the more you have a say now how does this happen now there is a split of percentage of how the Rari tokens are, are handed out and the distribution is 60% of the total supply is reserved for buyers and sellers. And this is to keep, you know, the market, you know, for allow there to be transactions to be fluid and for things to run smoothly. Now, the other 30% goes towards the team, okay, and into to investors, okay, early investors. And then the 10% is split between, you know, 8% goes to NFT holders and 2% is for the transactions. Okay, but altogether, these airdrops come to you. Now, why is this so powerful? Rari tokens cannot be bought on the exchange. So in other words, if you want to put it this way, in centralized institutions, you know, power influence can be bought. But with Rari, this isn't the case. In order for you to, to get into this community, to have any say in it, you need to be an active user. So you can't just buy, you know, you know, Rari tokens from an exchange, let's say Coinbase, and if you buy enough, that means you have 10% share when you had no active, you know, activity or no active participation within the community. So you wouldn't know what is the best thing. So it's absolutely ingenious. And this is autonomous by itself. Okay. So this is just the basis of Rari. Now, if you, if you're an aspiring, you know, artist or you're already an artist or you like to create art and you want to be able to have somewhere to go to be able to sell your art, your digital art, Rari is number one, definitely on the list. And definitely Rari tokens will always become more and more value as this space blows up. Now, for me, the, one of the things I say is the rule of first is that whoever's the first or the number one in the industry usually, or the first one to do something, usually hangs around for the, the entire journey. Okay, if you think about many companies, they may not be the best, but they're the first. You know, for me being in the UK, you know, some of the oldest um, grocery stores we have, like, for example, Sainsbury's, uh, things like that. They, not may, they may not have the best deals or all of the stuff that we want, but because they're the first, usually they hang around because people flock to them first. But I think Rareboom taking this move to be the first decentralized autonomous organization is absolutely fantastic. Now, the halfway between that is centralized and then you have the decentralized and in between we have non-custodial. Okay, so non-custodial, is you, there are some it's kind of like they're moving away from centralization in some aspects, but then they still have, you know, centralized things because of regulation. Now, one thing for me is that with cryptocurrency and NFTs and digital NFTs, there is right now is legal to do what hap what, what's going on, but it's just that I think one thing with crypto is why it hasn't had, you know, mass adoption is because there's not enough money in it right now because of, you know, laws and regulations. And I believe that governments are purposefully keeping the regulations in place because they're afraid of what cryptocurrency means for human life in the future okay now governments have to be governments they can't actually do fraudulent things they can't 
There's a whole lot of things that we can talk about. All right. Now, another place which is really cool is OpenSea. Now, I'm just going to bring up OpenSea over here. So if you want to find a place now, I'll be doing videos about creating digital art, but here is OpenSea. Now, OpenSea is another platform you can use, okay, to be able to, it's also an NFT marketplace as well. But the only great thing, I would say the greatest thing about this place now is that you can actually create art. So this is, you can actually start to become an artist from here. You can actually start to make digital art. And, uh, you know, you can see here, there's different prices for, I believe these prices are on Ethereum. Yeah. So you can see over here, we have hash mask, which is something very um, common and very popular right now all right, that people are creating. So you can see people are selling um, different tokens in, you know, with, at different um, types of, with different types of cryptocurrency. So we have the ERC20 token I talked about, MANA, Decentraland. Okay, and these are tokens. Here's a very rare, rare estate. So this is in Ethereum. Okay, and this is a state with a, or, you know, with a gallery. Okay, I believe this is a digital estate. Okay, people are selling all sorts of things. So there's a Theta Fuel uh, logo here. Somebody's selling for 3.9 million mana. We have a uh, parcel 132. I think this is a piece of land. It's going for 16,500 mana. Okay, I think this is the bid price, the last bid price. And I think this is the asking price. All right, and we have some other digital art here. So this is a interesting place so if you want to kind of understand what you know crypto kitties are you know crypto punks things like that here are crypto punks right here you can see them and 3d punks there's a whole lot of these crypto drunks <laughs> they have um, vitalik on here ethereum creator and there's a whole lot of different things they have so please have a look and check these out now let's i want to move on to just talk about some you know what to do if you want to find nfts now I'm going to use these two websites. So the first one I'm looking at is CoinMarketCap. All right. So CoinMarketCap, okay, .com. I, I have to shout them out. I've seen them grow. They're absolutely fantastic as a, as a group and as a company. They do a fantastic job to keep us up to date with the most accurate data that they can do, you know, providing that we're in such a, still, still such a small space, you know, compared to the norm. Now, if we're looking at this, if you want to find out what, where the NFTs are now, they've kindly put the NFT section in place. Now, it wasn't here a few weeks ago, okay? But what they do, I've seen that they do, is that they're really wise and very smart with how they um, do things. They make sure that they prepare just before, you know, a big takeoff. Now, in 2020, we had the DeFi boom, where decentralized, you know, the, for those of you who know what DeFi is, okay? Decentralized finance, if you don't. Okay, is the concept of being able to have banking outside of the walls of centralized institutions where you can actually, you know, do things like take out loans, you know, you can provide loans, you can provide liquidity to a, you know, to a liquidity pool and, you know, you can earn interest on that, you can earn yields, there's a whole lot of things that are going on, yield farming, so that was 2020, NFTs have kind of sprung up in 2021 now. Whenever these things happen, they just create a tab where you can see all of the NFTs straight away. So right here, as you click on NFTs, it gives you all of the different coins here. Now in the next video after this, I'll be giving you my top five picks of my NFT coins that I believe are gonna really do some serious numbers, okay? But here, if you load this up, it gives you all of the NFTs. So you have Wax, you know, Decentraland, Shillies, or I'll keep, I think I say it wrong, but you know, Chile's for example, has gone from, now if you wanted to open this up and find out how much percentage gain, you know, just have a look. It's gone from 0 0.01 cents or um, not too long ago. It's, it's done 66% gain in I think the last two months. And I'll open this up in a moment to see. Now, for those of you who are wondering, you know, NFTs, these are cryptocurrencies. Now, what they've done here is that they've put the list of com uh, companies and you know, cryptocurrency technology firms, which link with NFTs or they have software or they have things, devices, whatever they have, but they have technology surrounded around the NFT market. Okay. Engine coin is a powerful one, which I'll be talking about in a moment. We have the sandbox. We have, you know, Chiroma or Chiroma. I think I'm saying it right. 
ultra we have so many different ones okay wax okay many many different types of uh ones that we can look at okay we won't go through all of them now as i said i'm going to create a video for you guys top five now if you want to find out different informations you can find out the market cap you know of these of these from now usually when you open this the rating from first to where the top 100 is by market cap okay but if you want to check it by volume you can also do that you can check the circulating supply now if you click on any of these it will give you you know the top the the different pieces of information that you need to know and you can actually work out tokenomics and things like that from that all right now i'm going to be talking about engine today but just before i do i just wanted to show you this news piece right here so this is a news piece by washington post and it's of a guy called Beeple. now i can't talk about nfts or right now in this space you can't talk about nfts without talking about this guy called Beeple. now Beeple, his picture isn't here at the moment but I just want to show you how serious this industry has become. So yesterday, this was written yesterday. Now last week, okay, so roughly around the 11th, I believe, or the 10th, okay, a mysterious buyer paid 6.93 million, okay, I repeat, million dollars for a digital collage. Now this is one of the 5,000 pieces. Now the collage he paid for is something called Every Days, which is the first 5,000 days of the first, which is roughly around about 13 years from the inception of Bitcoin all the way up to 2021. So those first 13 years, he made a picture every single day and he created a collage of all of these pictures together of the first 5,000 days of um, this, um, this period of time. So 16, $69.3 million for a digital collage in an auction herald at the historic moment of the art world and the third large or the third highest price ever paid for or pay, you know paid for work for a living artist so you can see right here he's just sold it if in, in other words he's just sold an nft so digital art doesn't have any physical you know substance to it is digital for 69.3 million okay now why this is important is that whenever these striking events happen these kind of shock and awe moments as i call them this is where the industry starts to open up and it awake, awakens more of the world to actually start to look into crypto. Now, the buyer, a cryptocurrency entrepreneur, who uses the pseudonym Metacovan, may have benefited financially from the sale. Months before Christie's you know, auction house put the piece up for auction, Metacovan had bought other artworks by the artists, divided ownership of them into blockchain-based tokens, which is something you can do with NFTs and sold these to the public, which is amazing. Okay, so Metacovan acquiring this piece is absolutely fantastic. Okay, and Beeple right now is one of the most hottest artists. Now, Beeple, um, he works for or he works with you know clients like Louis Vuitton as a graphic designer, Nike, and things like that. But now he's done this crypto space digital art, it's absolutely amazing what he's managed to achieve. Okay, but this, this is a shocking moment, and the first thing you need to look at is you know what what are the different things that are kind of groundbreaking things one of the things here is that christie's which is a very well-known um, auction company auctioned this off and for the first time accepted crypto as payment so you can see that the adoption you know what was really going to take this market for those massive gains that everybody is looking for is adoption adoption and regulation those are the two terms that you hear me say a lot which i believe are going to be the things that are going to bring this industry to the light to the level it needs to be and i believe that right now is actually quite nice that is actually under wraps still there is still time for all of us to get in even more and be able to take the benefits whilst the night is still young before the door closes and the gains that we're all laughing about right now you know will be a thing that we talk about 10 years from now okay all right so moving forward all right just to give you that piece there let's talk about engine coin so engine coin is a fantastic coin okay if i pull it up over here right now it's third and it's seen some massive gains now engine coin is is in the sector of gaming now i think that one thing with nfts and gaming go hand in hand okay it's like bread and butter reason being is because the gaming industry has nfts already but it's just that the nfts are are owned by the company they're never owned by the people okay so engine coin as a company if you look at their price chart you can see right here that since 2007 if we start off from november 
the price has kind of been in a flat line for quite a few years. And I think this is something to remind you guys that patience is a virtue. In this industry right now of um, engine coin, um, things like engine coin, you know, decentralized, fi decentralized, I was going to call it decentralized finance, but they could actually go together. But, you know, you can see that it was flatlined for four years. Okay. The price range was really low. Okay. It only started to take off this year. Okay. So the beginning of this year was 17 cents a coin. And you can see that it spiked all the way up to the high of around about $3. If I get this up here, I think I can get it to about $3 here. Okay. So we see that when it comes to, you know, holding cryptocurrency, it's a long game sometimes. Now there are amazing gains you can get in one week, one day. And there are many stories of that, but really what you want to be in this, in this industry is a mixture of both. You want to have coins that you're going to hold on to for a very long time because you have to see these as assets that are going to be things you can pass down to generations because this, this industry is not going away. It's here to stay. Okay, but engine coins had a fantastic gain. If we start from just January anyway, you know, January the 1st, we have 13 cents all the way up to about $3. Now, if you can't really get to the high, you can put the last seven days here. And you can see that the highest point we got to right here in the last seven days, it's roughly around about $3. So just topping over $3, I think $3.5. Now, if you want to see this, one great thing about CoinMarketCap, and also another one I'm going to show you in a moment, is you can actually see the price. You can see the 24-hour high and low, market dominance, market rank, so many things. It tells you the market cap, the fully diluted market cap. Okay. You also have yesterday's price here, okay, in yesterday's volume, which are very good metrics that you need when you're trying to trade this or get yourself involved. Now, you can see the all-time high. Is placed out here for you. So the all-time high was three dollars five, March fifteenth. It's only three days ago, and you know, literally three years ago, the price was zero point zero one five. So just one point five cents. So imagine if you were to hold on to this right now, the percentage gain you would have got in terms of your ROI so far. I mean, if you took if you closed at the all-time high right now and that was you, you would have made sixteen thousand five hundred and sixty-six percent. So in other words, you would have made 165 times your money. So if you had literally put one pound in or one dollar in, you would have had $165. Or if you had put $100 in, you would have had $16,566, you know, three years later, which I would say is a very, very good investment. Okay. Now, if you're still holding onto the coin, you're still sitting on a hefty 106x return if you bought it at the lowest price point. Okay. So right now we've had a fantastic, you know, time of growth. And during this early period is where you're going to see this growth. As I keep saying, the more you delay yourself getting into this industry, the longer it's going to take, you know, I'm not saying that you won't receive those massive gains, but you want to get in whilst the price is still cheap and it's, the barrier to entry is low. As, the, as more investors come in, the barrier to entry gets higher and higher, okay, until it gets to a point where it becomes sometimes unfeasibly high for many people. Okay, and then instead of being able to own maybe 100 engine coins right now, you might own a third of an engine coin, which will still have some value, but I would much rather have more ownership whilst the night is young and make sacrifices, put the plate down, do whatever has to be done to get involved in this industry. So it also even does something here fantastically. It gives you, now if I click on show all markets, it's going to give everywhere that you can find these coins. So if I click on show all, it's loading up here. So you can see here, it shows you the volume, you know, all the markets where you can actually buy. So engine coin where it's paired to, you have engine, USD, Teva, Bitcoin. You have the Korean one on BitThumb. You have the Binance version of the stable coin or version of the US dollar, BUSD. And just a few pairs, you even have Binance coin, engine coin, Binance coin. So you can see it tells you everything here. It tells you the confidence. It tells you the liquidity, the volume tells you everything so it gives you the, an opportunity for you to safely buy or have a good idea to where to, where to safely buy now on top of that it even gives you the engine website and the white paper now the white paper i'll be doing a few videos on how to break down white papers now they are very long but we just want to have the key metrics we need to know when to how to break down a white paper to understand how we're going to move forward with a company all right so let's leave that out now let's have a look at engine now i've kindly brought this up for you guys already 
and uh, let's have a look at the engine coin to see what we have going on here. So engine coin, all right, they've they have a very lovely layout, very simplistic, very nice, you know, purple and white outlay. So you can see everything very clearly. So what do they believe? They believe in virtual worlds of tomorrow will evolve and interconnect into digital reality. Okay. So more simulations, these new realms will empower us to create real world value while having fun. Okay. This is what they believe. Okay. In short. Now, if you want to see what they do now, if I scroll back up here, this gives you a very good, you know, breakdown of what they do. So how does engine coin work? Okay. So here's how it works. So engine coin is infused into digital assets through a process called minting. So in a simple, a best way to describe it, let's say, for example, in the UK, all right, when they create a pound coin, the pound coin, when I grew up, I thought that it came out in that way, but the pound coin is put, is created, you know, as a, just a coin that has no, you know, markings or anything on there, okay? When the pound goes through the next process, it's stamped, you know, whilst it's still hot or molded in a way so that it has, you know, the, the crown and her Manchester's crown and everything. So that becomes minted. So now it becomes a thing of value, okay? Or values added to or stamped with approval that this is currency. And so engine coin is used in that way to stamp NFT. So, uh, you know, for example, here we have, you know, a mystical sword. So engine coin is kind of like that stamp on the NFT. And this is called minting, okay? And this process can be reversed every time an asset, you know, and this can be done by melting you know, the asset back into a coin or melting, just as you would do with a coin. If you want to get rid of the stamp and just get the, the metal from it, you will do the same kind of thing. Okay. Now, engine coin has real life value, meaning that all assets created with it have real life value too. Now, this is the key. Now, engine coin runs on the Ethereum blockchain is an ERC20 token. So that means this is how you can have an NFT token that exists as your own possession on the blockchain. OK, as it's attached to engine coin, which is absolutely insane and fantastic, which opens up a new international marketplace. Now, usually what we have with games right now is that there's an internal marketplace of buying and selling, you know, what we call in-game NFTs or in-game items. But now we can take it to a broad sense. Now, of course, NFTs are not in interchangeable one for another, but you can definitely have buyers and sellers where if you want to sell your NFT onto somebody else on the blockchain who wants it because it has value, they can actually own it. Even if they don't actually own the game, you can actually do that, which is amazing, okay? Now, these blockchain assets exist on the blockchain, which makes them very powerful. Now, imagine if you're a creator and you create your own swords. Now, imagine it opens up another industry for people to have more jobs, more money coming in, and it's just absolutely fantastic. So, for example, your entire gaming inventory can be on your phone, which is cool, all right? Featuring, so you can feature in a sword that you can use in multiple games. Do you see that? So before, if you have maybe, let's say, a gun or something on one game, you can actually take that gun and put it into another game and still use it because it's on the blockchain. Now, that's why I call amazing. Okay, now for me, I'm not a gamer in that way, but I do play games here and there, and that's actually fantastic. You know, imagine if you had a sniper in Tekken or something. I don't know. I'm just making up as I go along, you know, or you had a shotgun in, I don't know. I don't know if you could bring Yoshimitsu, you know, into Hall of Duty. <laughs> I don't know. Whatever it is, I don't know. But you get the picture. I guess he's not an NFT, but if you had the sword of Yoshimitsu, if you could bring that into another game to use to play in COD or something, that would be amazing. All powered by Engine Coin, okay, and which you can sell to anyone at any time, okay. So this creates a huge, huge amount of value and can only get better now. Engine Coin has had some great news. Now, it is a bit far back, but I'm going to pull up the news for you guys to see now. At the moment, me being a currencies trader, okay, trading Forex, the market is highly technical, and but then there are fundamental aspects that affect the market. And because the reason for it is the maturity, the stability within the currency markets at the moment. Now, there is news that causes the price to do massive swings. However, when it comes to cryptocurrency, the narrative is a lot different. Um, fundamentals really drive the price and technicals are more just for confirmations of entry okay when the price receives its stability in 20 years time when everything is stable and the, there's a mass adoption by then i hope anyway then we'll have a lot more stability and it won't be really fundamentals driving the price but more technical things because there's a lot more participants in the market and etc 
Okay, so Engine Coin had has had one of the most amazing pieces of growth, you know, in this year, one of the biggest pieces of growth. And what fueled it is this. Now, what I said to you about regulation here is the key. So this is dated January nineteenth. Engine Coin surges seventy one percent after becoming the first regulatory, you know, first regulatory approved gaming token in Japan. The first, the rule of the first is here. Engine Coin definitely for me doesn't seem to, it can go down from here, but it can only keep on going. So to give you a little insight into it, Engine Coin is definitely one of my top picks of coins that I'll be buying and holding on to for the foreseeable future and not selling whatsoever. Okay, so you can see that this regulatory approval allowed for this coin to spike up massively in its price. Okay, so it happened over about nine hours. Okay, and Engine Coin jumped from 23 cents to a high of 40, 40 cents, you know, which is the highest it's been in the last three years, which is fantastic. Okay, now Engine Coin was approved by the body, the JVCEA. Okay, and this is Japanese Authority for Video Games. All right, and is listed on Coin Check Exchange. Now, here's the key here because of this listing and because of this, you know, regulatory approval, they allowed, therefore, this situation here. Now, if you're a currency trader like me, now you have a new currency pair. You can actually trade Engine Coin versus the Japanese yen. And it's also tradable against Bitcoin too, which is actually fantastic because that creates more volume and that will allow the price to inflate even further. And I believe that that was the trigger point to allow for Engine Coin to see even more growth when the NFT space, you know, started to blow up. Now, we'll do some technical analysis at the end to see what we can possibly get from here. I'm going to share my markings with you and we can pull up Engine Coin to see what we can get from there. Okay. So, this is Engine Coin, and I believe I'm looking for a great future with it. Okay, and this is one of my top picks that you should keep on your radar. I mean, it's two dollars sixty, so it's gone a lot further. You know, it's gone very far away from seventeen cents. But we're going to do some technical analysis now, and let's see what we can do to jump in. Okay, now another place you can look at NFTs just before I get there is right here. So Coin Gecko, I'm going to load this up for you. Coin Gecko is another cool place you can go to. Okay, and. Uh, Coin Gecko, right here. He has the same kind of situation. You can click on DeFi or NFTs, portfolio exchanges, and etc. For you to be able to grab, you know, this opportunity to look at the, you know, the NFTs. So right here, it has the top NFTs by market capitalization. It tells you. And now if I scroll down here, you can see. All right, on here. Engine coins number one at the moment, Decentraland's number two, Flow is number three. All right, so now I would always say to use a, a mixture of the two. Now you have to remember that um, CoinGecko, only thing to remember is that CoinGecko is also a good place. It has a listing of 6,500, okay? Engine coin, um, the engine coin place that we went to the first time, which is for CoinMarketCap from CoinMarketCap is 8,876. So there's a lot more cryptos on here. So potentially there may be cryptos possibly that you may not see, possibly. So this is why I would say to use a mixture of the two, okay? So let's have a look here and see some, do some technical analysis. So I'm gonna pull up Engine Coin, okay? All right, so here's the crypto chart for Engine Coin is loading up right now. All right. So I hope you're really picking up and you can see that this space is a lot more than just the hype and a lot more than just somewhere to, you know, have nominal games, gains, sorry. So let's see. So I have engine coin here with Binance. I'm going to type it in right here again, just to run this through. So ENG is the ticker name. So if you type in ENG, you would have a whole load of um, different um, tickers come up here. All right, and you can you can choose different brokerages. So with TradingView is fantastic. They have price free from more than one broker. So Engine Coin here, you can use Binance. You can compare it to Ethereum. You compare it to U the US dollar. There's a whole load. If I scroll down, there's plenty of different ones we can use. Now, what I'm going to do here, okay. Um, 
we'll put it against engine coin and the dollar and i'll use bitfinex is fine or you can use binance whichever one you want to use or you can use bitrex all right now you also have binance here which is calculated by uh, trading view but what i'll do let me just pick one at random i'll use usdt for this up here now because usdt is a stable coin okay it's always supposed to equal to one dollar and to mirror the dollar okay but we'll grab this here i'm going to click on full feature chart and let's just let this load up i'm going to close some tabs here All right, so here it is against USDT. Okay, kind of the same thing as using the US dollar. USDT is quite stable, not too much of a price difference. So I'm going to pull up the chart and just do a quick technical analysis here. So one thing I want to say beforehand, and this is why I brought up the monthly chart, with USDT now, the price action should go back further to about 2008, but it's fine. 2019 is okay to use. But right now, one of the biggest keys I want you to understand is that in this crypto space at the moment, many cryptocurrencies okay are breaking what we call their all-time high or going past their all-time high and creating new all-time highs now one of the biggest things that we need to understand from a technical standpoint is that anytime the price does that we're in what we call price discovery mode the price has never been two dollars 61 you know the price has never been you know when the price got up, up right here at 50 cents the price had never been at 50 cents before okay so when it comes to price discovery, the way that you approach analysis is a lot different to how you would approach, you know, technical analysis in the stock market and the forex market. Because many times price has been there before. Now you do get new all-time highs and new all-time lows, but usually when that happens, okay, uh, the you know the course of actions are you know are quite, you know, there's not too many things you need to do. Most like if the price makes a new all-time high, the price will come back down and vice versa if it makes a new all-time low. Okay, and that's based on trader psychology and algorithmic trading. So when it comes to what we have here, okay, engine coin at the moment, if I go to the daily time frame here, the only thing we can do in order for us to understand this price action is to use, now it's clear that there's a bullish trend line here. Now, for me as a technical analyst, I actually don't use trend lines, okay? Trading Forex, I don't use trend lines to trade, but in this case, for the sake of teaching, I would use one. So if we go on the daily time frame and we look at what we have intraday, since we've got into March, the prices continue to rally. Now, what we have to do whenever this happens and we do, we get into price discovery mode, okay? And the price has never been here before. I'm gonna jump down to the four hour and I'm simply gonna mark off this high. So this high right here is gonna be a significant price point. Okay, this is the highest price point the market went to before there was some sort of reversal the other way, okay? Now, when we're looking at the price action of uh, what we have going forward with engine coin, the best thing to do now, cryptocurrency is algorithmic. Most of the price action movements that happen are, you know, is caused by whales. There are, you know, retail buying that moves the market. But what really moves the market is the big, the big dogs, you know, the high amount of liquidity. So what we need to look at is algorithmic levels here. Now, one of the most important algorithmic levels right now would be right here. So this is a support and resistance. I don't trade support and resistance. I trade supply and demand. So any of my students, if you're watching, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Okay. So we have this area right here. Now, if you're not too sure about what, you know, the difference, why I trade supply and demand and not support and resistance, I have a free course. Okay. The link will be in the description below. You can go and check that out. There's a five part course that I've created on technical analysis, you know, based around currency trading, but can be applied to every part of technical analysis. Okay. If you need something like that to get started, please go and check it out. All right. And if you even want more, you can follow our other channels. Okay. So you can follow my, my channel from my academy, the World Group Academy. Link will be down below. And if you want to follow our podcast, which is every Thursday, you can also jump onto that free of charge as well and there'll be more crypto goodness and finance stuff on there also all right so here's one algorithmic level i'm watching that the price has got to this area and started to sell off all right and after we've had here i'm gonna run this for you guys so right here 
we've had some stop loss action here. So the buy orders above here, the price has run those stop losses and it's on its way down. Now we have a liquidity pool at the low here. Now liquidity pools, now retail traders usually trade with double tops and double bottoms. And algorithmically, the market will always try to find a way to create that scenario and take the market away from you doing so. So beneath here, I'm expecting there to be a lot of buy orders and possibly stop losses too. From all, all levels of retail traders, whoever's maybe let traders you trade on leverage right now or different things of that nature. All right, so these are the different points I'm looking at right here. The second algorithmic level that I'll be watching right near from this H4 time frame would be right over here. Okay, so this is the next one. And then I also have this. Now, I'm going to give you a tip here. Now, because the price has already taken off so massively, I know some of you are thinking I've missed it. And I'm not going to lie to you and say I don't have that feeling too, but I always have to remind myself of the same thing. So as I'm marking this out, one of the things you want to do to help you to be able to get into a crypto is not to think of it as a specific price. Okay, and I'm telling myself this as well as I'm telling you. I'm going to write this here. What you want to do is a very simple thing that very commonly known is nothing you know, dramatic, it's called dollar cost averaging, dollar cost averaging. So dollar cost averaging, what that is, is calculating, okay, an average price for purchasing cryptos. Okay, or purchasing an asset. Okay, I'm going to put purchasing an asset because you can use it across different asset classes. This can go for stocks, this can go for uh, a whole lot of things for cryptocurrency, things like that. So, when it comes to looking at analysis, because we're most of the time, not most of the time, but in this bullish market that we're in right now, or the bull market, a lot of cryptocurrencies are going to continue to make new all time highs. So, what you want to do to position yourself not to miss out. And to, but then not to fall into the FOMO or the fear of missing out and just buy emotionally. I'm sure there's many people who bought at the tops here. And right now they probably sold at the bottom here and they've made a loss on something that is actually very profitable. But because of their timing of entry, lack of technical analysis, emotional you know, response to price instead of logical thinking, as I always say to my students in the academy and to anybody I meet when we discuss these kind of things, when you start to think with emotions, logic goes out of the window. So please don't do that, okay? Now, from my analysis here, looking at what we have, if the algorithm that controls engine coin, along with buyers and sellers, if the price is manipulated well enough, we should see some selling going on. And I'm expecting this low here to be run. So I do expect the price to drop down to at least $2.25 for a rebuy. Okay, that's my first entry. So with dollar cost averaging, what I'll do, the easiest thing you can do is just to kind of mark out where you're probably going to buy up. So I'm going to give you my pick. So my first area that I'll be looking to probably look for a buy would be number one right here. Number two would be into the next area of demand where there was a price accumulation. So where we have these high spikes in volume, you know, a lot of retail traders would have been buying around around here. I'm expecting a, a mixture of panic buying, panic selling, because some people wake up and they've got, they put a thousand pound in and tomorrow they've got 10,000 pounds or something like that. And they're thinking, or oh, maybe not tomorrow, but they put a thousand pounds in a few weeks ago and now they've woken up to 10k and they're thinking oh my god i need to sell before this disappears so this you know reaction right here if i draw this area right here this will be number two okay this is a demand area very strong area of demand now, i haven't drawn it to the most accurate i just want the body of the candle i don't need the wicks all right so number two is right here so here's number two and then we have the third aspect here. So if I go around here, we have another set of accumulation, which starts off around about here at this demand zone right here. This was the area or the, the order block that was responsible for pushing the price. So this price range, the order block there was holding the price and there was enough um, buying power to push the price further upwards. So here's number three. So if I just use three for an example, what I'll be doing technically, that doesn't mean I'll be waiting for the price to get down here, but rather what I'm going to do, and this is where you can mix your technical analysis with your this simple strategy. Let me just get a good line. 
So what I'll be saying to myself is my first target for buying would be here, all right? Now, this is not for technical trading. This is for investing. Remember, investing is trading in slow motion for me anyway, because when you're, when you're trading as a Forex trader, I'm a day trader primarily. When I'm looking at the market, I'm looking for entry points to be able to hold huddle, as we would say, or hold on to my investments or to get entries for a better price. That's why I'm doing this technical analysis. I'm not doing it because I'm going to go on an exchange and sell, okay? At least not with this coin, okay? And this is what we're looking for when it comes to, you know, taking the trade. So we have one, two, and three here. So I'm expecting the price to have some sort of reaction when it gets here. So we have $2.26, all right? So if I put an equal sign here, first price point for first buy would be $2.26. Now, of course, I, we all want the price to drop a bit lower. All right, down here, the next price buying point, I'll say just under $2, so $1.98, okay, not $198. Sure, we'll get there one day. When it does, if you bought right now, you have 100x, which is fantastic. And then um, right here, we were to get a buy entry somewhere here or just at the low, maybe beneath. But let's just say here, let's just call this $1.60, all right? So... This is $1.60. All right. So to do a dollar cost average, what do we do? Simple thing that we have to do, very nice and easy. We just have to do a bit of maths here. And then find the mean. Okay. So what we will do, I'll put this, I'll add this all up. So if we want to go for our dollar cost average, it's going to equal to, so $2.26 plus $1.98 plus $1.60 divided by three. Now, if I do the maths on that, um, let me grab my phone. Or oh, I have my old maths calculator. So those of you, especially UK guys, you know this calculator, Casio one. All right. So $2.26 plus $1.98 plus $1.98. Dollar sixty, all right. So if we do this divided by three, we get a dollar cost average of about one dollar ninety four. According to mine, it says one dollar ninety four recurring. So I say one dollar ninety five to the nearest two decimal places. So an average, when you're doing your investing, what you want to keep in mind is this price point here. So an average, you want to be trying to get, on average trying to get your portfolio, if you were to average out where you bought everything at, around about $1.95. Now, when you think of it this way, you don't feel like you've missed out too much. Of course, you're not probably going to get in now, all right? Looking at these algorithmic levels here, this here, I think the price is clear as to what it wants to do. I do believe we're going to get some more short action, okay? And uh, once this liquidity pulls run, I believe that the price may even get a bit lower. Now, what I like to do is to always have the just-in-case level, so just to leave you off with some tips that I can share with you that would help you and get you in as quick as possible would be your what if level. Now the what if level for me is right down here. So the what if level is gonna be these lows right here which are equal at the moment. So there's a potential another liquidity pool at $1.07. Now this what if level is not something that I'm gonna be waiting for with my whole heart. If it happens, I know what to do. So with this crypto space at the moment is it's very volatile and even though the price is at two dollars 76 one piece of news you know can shoot this price straight back down to one dollar in the instant okay or if there's enough activity retail traders and whales or whales selling off their coins could cause this price to shoot down massively so there's one more liquidity void here these double this equal lows here that the price may get to and that would be like if that happens then I'll probably load up the most. Now, what you can do on the advanced levels is now, if you have, you know, let's say 500 pounds, you can create percentages for yourself as to how much you're going to allocate to each buying point. Okay, so maybe you might do a 30, 33, 33, 33, or you may do a 20, 20, and then 60, or you might do 20, 40, 40. It depends, okay, on what you want to do. Now, I guess wisely, you want to buy less at the higher prices and more at the lower. Okay, so that your dollar your dollar cost average, you know, you'd probably be getting the best out of your dollar cost average doing it that way. Okay. 
because you have to remember this dollar cost averaging is providing, I haven't done any percentages. In theory, I'm supposed to times these by the percentage of what you have. So this is basically in, in the, you know, in the case that we have exactly a third of each and these, or we buy coins of equal amounts, okay? Um, a third each at each of these price points, okay? Now, if this number changes and you buy more at the bottom, uh, a bit less here and hardly any here, then your dollar cost average potentially could be a lot different. And just to calculate that, just to give you there, it will be the co dollar cost average or the dollar price times the percentage you have in your portfolio, okay? So you can play around with this and see what you can do. So if you did a 10% one, all right, if I did this for you to explain, for if I, if I did if I did a dollar cost average based on, and I'm gonna put some space here. Now you can, if you're doing three price points, I, I recommend three. So if I gave you a ratio, all right, and I said to you, we have a 10, 20, this is my ideal anyway, 10, 10, 10 20, 70, all you would do here is you put this in brackets, all right, and we know that 10 will represent uh, the 10%, okay, so I did a times 10, so you're going to divide all of this after you finish by 100, so if you get 10% of your portfolio, you know, at $2.26, you have 20% of your portfolio at uh, $1.98. And then you have 70% at $1.60. You realize that your dollar cost average is slightly lower. Okay. All right. Now, because we're dealing with percentages here, you're going to have to divide by 100 for all of these things. So I do this 2.26, uh, let's do this quickly, 2.26 times 10, all right, plus $1.98 times 20, plus $1.60 times 70, okay, divide that by 100. All right, so if you divide it by 100 now, okay, so we don't do divide by three because we're not using that. So if you divide by 100, your dollar cost average goes down to $1.74, okay? So you get a bit of a low one. So this is just an example of some maths you can do to play around with this stuff, okay? So get comfortable, start to work out things, and you can work out ratios that work for you as to what you're looking for. And then with this dollar cost averaging, you find that you can get some really good results. So. These are my kind of buy points that I'm looking at, and uh, I hope you took something from this and you enjoyed this. Okay, please remember, share this with your friends, like, subscribe, share. There'll be a lot more great content coming out, and uh, thank you very much, guys.